Hi, I'm Will Hamilton, founder at smartpath.co. And today we're going to talk about the best structure for free consultations if you want to attract ideal tax and accounting clients. Free consultations can be stressful. We probably all felt it at one time or another. In those meetings, you really don't want to give away a bunch of free advice. Yes, you love helping your clients and you want to really give some value and build some rapport in that free consultation, but you don't want to give away so much that that doesn't turn into a paid engagement. Or maybe you don't know exactly what to say or how to follow a structure in that meeting to make that conversation feel less awkward, to make it simply flow so that it leads in the direction that you want it to go. Or maybe you're not comfortable talking about yourself. This is a big one. You don't want to spend a lot of time talking about your education or explaining your experience and trying to really sell yourself. Or you may not know exactly how to explain your value in a way that's going to resonate with today's clients so they can see and understand why they should pay you over any other of your competitors. Well, if any of those feelings resonate, I just want you to know that you are not alone. Uh, free consultations can be very difficult and every firm owner struggles with them at some point in their practice. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to work with over 1,300 tax and accounting firm owners over the last 10 years, and every single one of them at some point has had to work on or revamp their free consultation process. So what we want to do today in this training is we want to give you a proven framework for how to structure your free consultations. And whether you call it a free consultation uh, or discovery meeting, we like to refer to, to them as discovery meetings. Once you have the right structure for that meeting, you can easily convert prospects to premium level engagements or in 30 minutes or less. You can increase your fees with new and existing clients, and you can have fun discovery meetings, ones that you actually enjoy. You can structure it in a way that it's not going to feel stressful and you're not going to feel anxiety around it. So you won't dread having that type of meeting on your schedule. And most importantly, we're going to show you how to structure the meeting so that you can demonstrate your value and stand out from the competition without any hard selling and without feeling like you're having to pressure the client into working with you. Uh, this is a quick case study. This is Christine Johnson. She's one of our uh, private practices that we work with. She's in Tennessee. And she has a small firm. She works with about 400 clients, a mix of individuals and businesses. And like most tax and accounting professionals, she loves helping people. And so what was happening in her free consultations, she was diagnosing uh, the problems that people were having. And then she was giving away free strategies and free instructions for how to solve them. And so those discovery meetings were helpful, but they didn't turn into paid engagements for her. And so when she implemented the premium discovery call structure that we're going to show to you here and, and give to you in this training, she was able to add over $118,000 in new annual revenue in the first 90 days just by following this exact structure. So we want to give this to everybody today. Um, it's a free download, and we're going to go through this worksheet together. I'm going to share my screen so that we can fill it out together and, and actually see how it works. To get that, if you want to follow along, just go to download.smartpath.co.co and you can download that a worksheet yourself and then we will go ahead and get started. So let me share my screen here and we will pop over and go through this worksheet together. All right, so when you download the worksheet, this is the first thing you're going to see. This is called the premium fee quadrant, and we call it a quadrant because there's four basic elements in this quadrant that we want to focus on in order to really structure that discovery call, structure that free consultation. The first quadrant on the left is going to be details. The next one is going to be progress. The third one is going to be impact, and the fourth one is going to be alignment. So we're going to go through the quadrants uh, clockwise, uh, one by one. And the first thing that I want you to do when you download your worksheet is on the top of the page, just write down new and existing. And I want you to write those two down because you can use this same structure for new clients as well as for existing clients. Now, why would you want to do a discovery call or free consultation with an existing client? Well, uh, do you have any clients right now 
that you want to increase their fee. Uh, do you have anybody that you've been working with for a long time? Maybe their fees haven't kept up with inflation. Uh, maybe you're doing more work for them now than they originally engaged for. So you're experiencing some scope creep and you need to increase that fee. Uh, or maybe you have a client who just needs more help. And so you want to increase the fee. Well, having a discovery call using this structure that we're going to show you, it's the perfect mechanism to easily increase a client fee without a lot of friction. And here's why. Nobody wants to pay more for the same thing, right? We all hate paying more for gas because it's the same gas. It doesn't make our car faster. It doesn't last longer. Uh, it's the same uh, exact same thing for, for a higher cost. Well, our clients are the same way. They don't want to pay more for the same tax return or for the same accounting services. And so what we need to do is we need to identify exactly what things they want to accomplish in their life in the next 12 months and then give them an engagement that's going to allow you the time and the expertise and the process that can help them get those results. And then we charge them a fee for that new engagement. And so this quadrant is perfect for new clients and existing clients. So I want you to, to write that there at the top. Now let's jump into details. So in the first quadrant here, details, here is where I like to write down some basic information about the client. Uh, the first thing that I want us to write down is going to be industry. So what industry is this person working in? Are they in the medical industry? Do they own a construction company? Are they in sales? What industry are they? So for this example, let's say it's going to be uh, construction. Depending on what industry that client is in, you can immediately start to identify, is this client going to match our ideal? Uh, do I have any experience in this industry? Do I have any other clients that are in this industry maybe that I can introduce them to? It's going to start helping you really create a profile and a structure for who this client is. Now, if it's an existing client, you may already know this, obviously, so you can pre-fill this and write this down. The second thing that I want us to write down in the details section is going to be revenue or income. So this, for this example, let's say 250K. And I want to know that because that's going to show us what type of problems and solutions this person may be struggling with. So if you're a brand new business and you're making 10 grand a year, you're going to have a certain level of problems. If you're a million dollar business or multi-million dollar business, obviously you're going to have a separate set of problems. The other reason why I wanted to know the revenue and income level is I want to start gauging may this person have the cash flow or the budget to be able to afford our ideal fee structure. So the second thing we want to look at is revenue and income. The third thing that I want to uh, look at is going to be um, employees or staff. So do you have employees? Do you have staff? Um, is anybody on payroll? Uh, I want to understand if it's a business client, what the full size of the business is. The next thing that I'm going to want to understand is going to be uh, payroll. For that payroll, who's doing it? And what, you, what is your experience with it? Because some clients have payroll that's structured completely wrong. Some are using a payroll service that they don't enjoy. And not that we're always going to take over the payroll, but we may be able to advise on it or get them on a payroll solution that's going to work best for them. So I want to understand uh, the payroll. Uh, the next thing that I want to look at is going to be entity structure. So are you an LLC? Are you an S-Corp? Are you a sole proprietor? Uh, what entity structure do you have? Uh, when was the entity formed? Do you know if it's healthy and active with the state? Uh, if I can understand the entity structure of the business, that's also going to start helping uh, me understand the health of that business and where that business may need some additional assistance. And then the last thing I want to understand is going to be accounting. So who does your accounting? Are you on QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online or Zero or whatever it may be? Uh, do you have a, a cash flow statement and a balance sheet and a PL that's up to date? And if it's not up to date or you don't know, uh, how many months or how many years behind might you be?
Okay. So all of this stuff is stuff that you may know if it's an existing client. If it's an existing client, pre-fill out this quadrant and just go through it with the client and verify that the information that you have is right. Verify that any assumptions that you're making is right. And with an existing client, this quadrant is still going to be of huge value because it's going to show the client that you're listening, uh, that you're paying attention, that you want to uh, understand them at a deeper level, um, that you want to make sure that you, you get them the best possible data that you can get them. So there's a lot of value in just verifying this with the client because the client sees that we care and that we're trying to get them the best result. And then with the new client, this is a great tool in this quadrant to really figure out and create a holistic profile of who this person is. So that's the details section. The next section, oh, and at the top uh, right there, just write in like five to 10 minutes. I wanna usually spend about five to 10 minutes on the details section. That's not a hard and fast rule, but once you get some practice at this, um, you want to spend about five to 10 minutes there. Now moving to the right, the next quadrant is going to be progress. And the big question we want to ask there is what progress does the client want in the next 12 months? And we're going to focus on 12 months. Uh, the world is changing faster now than it ever has before, obviously. And so if we look three to five years out, you know, it's, it's hard to forecast that long. Um, also, 30 days is too short. You know, if, if you own any size business, it's hard to turn the ship, so to speak, in 30 days. And so I usually want to focus on the next year. You know, in the next 12 months, what progress does that client want to make? The value here, this quadrant is hugely valuable. Because if I can identify what progress the client want, what, what progress the client wants to make, now I can know what services and results they want to pay for. So every single client that you're going to talk to in a free consultation or a discovery call wants to make some level of progress in their life. They want to stress less. They want to find some cash to go on vacation. They want to budget better so they can start saving for retirement or sending a kid to college. Um, they want to be able to work fewer hours. They have some level of progress in their life that they're really trying to make outside of our practice. And so our job in this discovery call and this free consultation is to identify in their words, using their language, what progress do they want to make in the next 12 months? As soon as we can understand what progress they want to make, now we have an anchor to tie our proposal to so that we can show them, hey, if this is where you want to go in the next 12 months, this is the value that you want to achieve. These are the results that you want. We can give you a service or a package level that's going to allow you to make that progress. And now I've presented something of value to the client because my proposal to them isn't focused on a fee schedule of, of uh, different schedules in the tax return that I have to file. They don't care about that. It's not focused on how many transactions are in your accounting. They don't care about that. The client's not a tax and accounting professional. They don't care about the things that we care about. They care about the progress in the life that they want to make. And so even though the proposal that we give them may list out the different services that we're doing, we have to create context around those services so that they can see how those services are going to equal the specific progress that they want to make in the next 12 months. And when we can draw a straight line between those two things, the progress they want to make and the proposal that we give them, now uh, we have something of value that they're going to be willing to pay for. So progress is a really important step uh, in the whole free consultation quadrant. Uh, if we want to charge premium fees, if we want to attract clients today that want to pay, uh, pay a premium level fee. Now, the next quadrant underneath that is going to be impact. And here I want you to write down uh, one word. And the word that we're going to write down is truth. We are conditioned as consumers usually to just give short answers because when people are interviewing us in a business context, a lot of times we feel like they're trying to sell us or they don't have our best interests in mind. They're just trying to fulfill their best interests. And so we're conditioned just to give a short answer to try to get through the conversation to get try and get a price and then move on about our day. But once we've 
looked at the details of a client, once we know what progress that they want to make, we've positioned ourselves in that advisor role in the client's life. Hopefully by this point in the conversation, they're starting to understand that we really care about them and we want to be impactful in their life. And so in this impact quadrant, we're looking for the truth. What's the answer behind the answer that they're not saying? And so, for example, if the progress that I want to make is I want to pay less tax, let's use that as an example. I want to lower my tax bill. That's great progress that the client wants to make. But what's the truth behind that progress? Well, why do they want to lower their tax bill? What impact is that going to have in their life? If they could pay less taxes, let's say they could lower their taxes by five grand a year. What would they do with that five grand? Are they going to you know, buy a new car? Are they going to invest in their retirement? Are they going to invest in education? Are they going to you know, just put some savings away so they don't feel as stressed throughout the year? The, the idea is that we want to get the client to tell us the impact that that progress is going to have on their life. And the reason why we want them to talk about the impact is because once they share the impact of that progress in their life, now they're going to be willing to pay. They're not going to be willing to pay the proposal that we put in front of them unless they can see how, the, how our services are going to have a direct impact in their life. And so we don't have to spend a ton of time on this, but this is one of the quadrants that a lot of firms initially don't plan for in their free consultation or the discovery meeting is they may get the details. They may talk a little bit about the client goals, but we got to take that one level deeper and say for the goals that this client wants to achieve, what's, how's their life going to change? How's their life going to get better? Because if we can show them through our proposal, how their life is genuinely going to get better once we solve these issues for them, now that client is going to be willing to pay your fee. So impact is really important. Um, so then the last piece that we want to look at is alignment. And for alignment, I want you to write down a couple of different things. The first thing that we're going to write down is going to be product. So do I have a product or a service or package uh, already built for this client that's going to align with the progress and the impact that they want? Uh, do I need to create a product? Um, the next thing that you're going to look at is going to be price. Does it make sense for the product or the service that they need? Uh, is it going to be a price point potentially that they're going to be able to afford? Uh, is that going to align? Uh, together, you know, maybe they want to make progress on something that's going to cost a very significant amount of money to help them with, but we know they may not be able to afford that. So even though they want to make that progress, maybe we got to figure out how to structure the engagement to be smaller chunks that are actually going to align with what they could afford to pay. So the progress that they want to make, is it going to align price-wise with the product or the service that they need to create that progress? Then the next thing that I want you to write down after product and after price is going to be personality. Is this a person that I want to work with? If I'm going to engage them in a premium level engagement, maybe we're going to be talking several times throughout the year instead of just during tax season. Do they have a personality that I enjoy? Are they a human being that I want to spend more time with that's going to align with me and my staff and how we do business? Is there going to be alignment on the personality front? And then the last thing that we want to write down is going to be skill set. And here the question is, do I or someone on my half, my staff have the skill set to provide this product at this price to help the client make the progress that they want to make? Do I need to get some education on my side to increase a skill set to help them with this? Do I need to go out and find a remote resource or a remote technology that we can use to help them make this progress? And so if you follow these four quadrants, let's go back up to the top, details, five to 10 minutes, uh, progress, we're probably going to want to spend about 15 minutes on, let's say 10 to 15. Uh, impact, we're going to want to spend at least five to 10 minutes talking about impact. And then alignment, we're going to do another five to 10 minutes. So once you get practice with this and you go through these four quadrants with every single client, you can do this meeting in 30 minutes. I usually like to give myself a little bit of a buffer on the back end. So I'll schedule 45 minutes, um, but you can do this within 30 minutes. And this is a structure. If you can structure 
your discovery call this way, you are guaranteed to have a valuable meeting where you can see exactly what the client wants to pay for so that you can give them the right fee. That client's going to feel like you're listening to them and you're having a different level of conversation than they're used to having with their tax professional, with another tax accountant, if they're working with somebody else. And so you're going to immediately align yourself as the advisor in that client's life. You're going to be able to see all the details that you need to see to give them the right proposal. And so what I want to do is if you keep going down in the download in the worksheet, the next thing is how do you make this quadrant uh, tangible? And this is a discovery worksheet that you can use that's going to follow along with the principles in the quadrant that we just went, went through. And so here you can put in the client information, all the notes and the details. Then it's going to give you prompts. So there's five questions that are going to prompt you to go through the different quadrants and really understand this client from a deeper level. So what do you want to accomplish? How is accomplishing those things and you're going to make your life or your business better? Uh, here are some other things maybe that you want to uh, look at Mr. Client or Mrs. Client, depending upon what you want to accomplish. And then the fourth section is really important. Here's where you're going to write out your priorities. So maybe as you go through the quadrant, there's five, 10, 15 things that the client wants help with. Well, that's great. You know, maybe you can bundle a package to help with everything, but no matter what, we have to set a priority of if we work together for a specific fee, what are we going to work on first, second, and third in order to help you make the progress that you want to make? If I can define that with the client before I ever give them a price, by the time I give them that price and give them that proposal, they're excited to pay us because now they can see exactly what steps we're going to do in what order to help them reach their goals. So let's say the first priority is they want to start um, saving for retirement. So then the first priority is we would need a cash flow plan slash budget to figure out how we can start saving for retirement. Notice I didn't say that we need to make an investment recommendation. This isn't about investments. This isn't about um, you getting a license and becoming you know, a stockbroker. This is about looking at the client's financials, their QuickBooks or their personal financials, and just seeing how much income is coming in, how much is going out. Is there a way to you know, figure out if there can be an extra hundred bucks a month or a thousand bucks a month in the budget to start putting towards some of your goals? So this is cash flow planning. This is budgeting. If you know you have a background in accounting, this is something that you're very comfortable and used to doing. We just need to say it out loud and talk about it so the client can see how we're going to help them make progress. Then after I have the cash flow plan in place, then we can say with a deeper understanding about income, now we can create a tax plan. So if we can really understand what are you spending your money on? Are you buying assets for the business? Do you have free cash flow throughout the year? Once I understand the cash flow, now I can put together a tax a tax plan and guarantee to lower uh, your tax bill to the lowest possible point that makes sense for you. Then the third priority is maybe uh, through the cash flow planning process, we understood that your accounting isn't up to date or you're not structuring your accounting the way that it needs to be structured. So the third priority is we're going to do a conversion from QuickBooks to QBO. And we're going to update your chart of accounts so that we have access to better data so that you can make better decisions in the business and so that we don't have to go through a great big difficult process every time we want to do cash flow planning throughout the year. So this worksheet is going to help you not only answer, ask and answer the right questions, but also give you a structure for how to prioritize the next steps with the client. Uh, then you're going to go through and you're going to make a conscious decision. Does this person align with our practice? Is this a person that we want to onboard? Or if they're an existing client, is this a person that we want to give a new engagement to maybe at a higher fee and work together more throughout the year? And then the last thing that we want to do, this is really important. We want to set an expectation for the next step. So the next steps is we're going to put together some type of roadmap or proposal that's going to include pricing, for how we can work together, 
We're going to schedule one more quick, quick call to review that roadmap or that proposal, answer any questions you have, modify if necessary. And then once everything makes sense and is agreed upon, we'll allocate resources for your work and get started. And so we want to make sure that we schedule a date and time to review that proposal with the client in this first meeting, in this free uh, discovery meeting or free consultation. So that's the download if you use it. Um, and in your practice for your discovery meetings, I know it's going to be very, very helpful and it's going to help you attract that premium level client that you want to work with. So what are the next steps? Let's go back over here to the deck. And so the first thing that I want you to do is go to download.smartpath.co. If you haven't already, uh, get that free discovery worksheet and just try to use it with one person. Uh, the, the 10th time that you use it, it's going to feel a lot easier uh, and a lot better than the first time that you use it. Anytime you do something for the first time, it's going to feel a little bit different. It may be a little um, uneasy, but I just want you to try it with one person. If you try it with just one person, that second, third, fourth time you use it, it's going to get easier and easier. And you're going to start seeing your fees naturally increase because now you're asking the right questions in the right order to really make a difference. And remember, we want to look at the details of the client. We want to look at the progress that they want to make. We want to look at the impact that progress is going to have in their life. And then we want to look at alignment. Is this a client that we really want to work with? Uh, so go to download.smartpath.co, uh, get your free worksheet. If you need help with your pricing, uh, with increasing your margins or attracting some of your ideal clients, feel free to reach out to us uh, on the landing page when you uh, get your download. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next training.